So today uh, on his blog, Tony Jones posted an interesting thing. It was a uh, chapter of the book that he was working with some folks on. And the chapter is called Deconstructing Justice, What the Postmodern Turn Contributes to pa Christian Passion for Justice. And it's in this book called um, The Justice Project. And I'll link both of those on the site, theimageoffish.com. But uh, the article was interesting and it prompted me to make this video, which is um, on a topic I've been thinking about for quite some time. And specifically, it's when he's talking about um, Gadamer and Ricor and their hermeneutic of humility. And I wanted to talk a little bit about how uh, I think about Ricor, uh, hermeneutics in general, and um, specifically his thing about the second A of a Tay. So I would recommend Tony's article. I think it's great, and especially the use of hermeneutics and that postmodern uh, tool of the, the hermeneutic lens. Uh, but then I also want to uh, jump off away from the article into um, some other things that Ricor addressed. So I'll just um, uh, read a little bit from, from Tony's article. Um, We've got choices to make as citizens of the 21st century globalized world working towards justice in, a very, in an era very unlike Jesus' day. And believe it or not, those aforementioned postmodernists can help. Here's how. Firstly, the postmodern turn has reminded us of our own limitations. Postmodern theorists like Hans Georg Gadamer and Bihal Ricoeur have written much on the idea of hermeneutics that is, different theories of interpretation. And what they've taught us is that we must move forward in the globalized world with a hermeneutic of humility. The first step in moving towards a hermeneutic of humility is to recognize the all-encompassing nature of hermeneutics. Although some conservatives will argue this claim, there is no one clear, plain and simple answer to what is truth, or how shall we interpret that verse, or what is the most just thing to do in this situation. When we lived in more homogeneous groups, the reality of interpretation could be ignored. If you lived in an area where almost everyone had your same skin color, spoke the same language, and believed in your same religion, chances are that you and your neighbors would pretty much agree on what laws would be most just. And so Tony's done a pretty good job there um, uh, talking about hermeneutics, which is to say the study of interpretation. And um, I always think of hermeneutics as seriously, well, like, what is that about? Um, I immediately start using this word naivete, which is something that Ricoeur has talked about in his Symbolism on, and Evil. Um, he has addressed this. And so Paul Ricoeur is a postmodern thinker, and uh, I want to just talk about some of the things that he points out. And the way I think about hermeneutics is like this. When you look at a stop sign, uh, the, the meaning that it contains, stop, is conveyed to you instantaneously and you don't question it. When you see it, you know it means stop. You read it, the, the, the word stop says stop, and so you stop. Uh, there's no particular uh, processing of that. You don't doubt it. You say, well, like, what, you know, what is, is there some message here? It just, it just means stop. You know, it's a transparent communication. There comes a point in time, though, when with some communications, we begin to question, you know, is there something behind that? I know that it says such and such a thing, but what does it mean, such and such a thing? So for example, as a child, we might believe in Santa Claus, but at a certain point, you know, our friends in school, or we've caught on to this or that, we heard some things, we saw mom or dad, if Christmas is a thing we do, and Santa is something we believe in, we begin to become suspicious. And so uh, Ricoeur and others refer to this phase of kind of interpretation as the hermeneutic of suspicion. And that results in a lot of skepticism and consideration of, you know, doubting, you know, where are people writing so? So, for example, uh, biblical scriptures, you know, who wrote them? What was power construed as? Were there any women involved? Was it all men? Ethnically, who was in charge? So it begins to become questions of power. And when we look at power, we see that certain things are represented in certain ways. It doesn't mean everything's a lie or that everything's true, and it doesn't go to utter relativism, but it means that we've got another lens upon which to interpret. If you knew that something you were reading was written by um, the Nazi regime, it's possible you would read it with a different hermeneutic lens than if you're reading something written um, by uh, the Girl Scouts of America. You know, it, it, it changes how we interpret things. And people who are interested in hermeneutics are interested in their interpretation of lots of things, from biblical scriptures to everyday interactions in popular culture. And so, Ricoeur has said that there's this kind of naivete, and then we move into this um, desert 
uh, of suspicion, where we're using the hermeneutic of suspicion so much, we're doubting the text, we're probing the text, we're asking questions of the text, because we're not sure about its intentions. And a lot of people stay there. And it's this, this place where everything gets denied and no one's really sure about anything that uh, gets maligned a lot in uh, um, people who are bashing on popular culture uh, in terms of postmodern culture. But Ricoeur says that there's something beyond that. There's something beyond the naivete, the desert of uh, suspicion and criticism, and then into this third thing which Ricoeur calls the second naivete. So what? Who cares about hermeneutics? Who cares about naivete, whether it's the first or second kind? Well, what Ricoeur is trying to suggest is that we can't ever get back to how we were as children. You can't ever tell the child that Santa Claus is real again uh, after, after he or she has begun to doubt it. It isn't going to happen. It would be silly for us to try and make ourselves like children in the sense that um, we ignore the things around us that made us suspicious in the first place. But, Ricoeur says, there's something that can happen in the interaction with a text where we, having been transformed, like I addressed in the, the last um, uh, post, being transformed, we somehow understand that that story, that text, that, you know, in this example, the story of Santa Claus, has changed us. It has somehow left its imprint on us, and in some way, we do believe it because it has become part of us. And so we live in that world in a way that seems naive, perhaps, to the people who are still just suspicious. But once you pass through that hermeneutics of suspicion in the desert of criticism, you engage the other side and you come out in a place where you're transformed and you realize your transformation as a result of engaging with the text. And so for those of us that do work with congregations, it's something that we can say is, you know, it might be that you're doubting this part of the story, and, and maybe that's okay. What I would encourage you to do is think about how this story has changed you. How is this story part of your life? And in those places, we can engage ourselves with the text and come to a comfortable understanding that we may be living in some tensions, and, and that's okay, because interpretation is constantly going on. We're always asking ourselves, why did I do this? What does this mean? What does the text say? You know, what does scripture say? What does the Christian faith say I should be doing? What's just? And that's okay. We live in a postmodern world where we don't live, as Tony says, in a homogeneous culture. There's all sorts of things are going on, so our minds are constantly going or asking questions. In our pews and in our congregations, that has to be okay. And what we can do is encourage people to find out how that story is being lived in their lives. Not in a way where they're chewing everything wholesale and believing everything exactly like they would a stop sign without any interpretation accepting for and acknowledging that a degree of uh, suspicious hermeneutic lens is acceptable, that asking questions is okay, and that beyond that doubt and skepticism, there's a place where we can get, where we find that in our lives, we are uh, living transformed lives because the stories that we have grown up with that are part of our culture, part of our understanding, have imprinted themselves on us to such a degree that we see the world differently as a result. That's what Ricoeur calls the second naivete, at least as I understand it. And I think it's a useful tool for folks who are working with congregants. And um, I think it's another example of how Ricoeur is a great thinker who's useful for folks who are doing um, work in the world.